All right, y'all, so I'm here for Black Ink Crew, um, New York. This is Season 6, Episode 17. Um, I'm late on doing this video because my mom was in the hospital. Actually, she was in the hospital for the past couple of days um, when I had did, you know, my Love and Hip Hop um, video. Um, but at the time when I was doing the video, I didn't know, like, you know, everything that was going on, nobody really knew or whatever till she texted me and told me which, what was going on. And I really don't want to get into all of it, but, um, she's supposed to be released from the hospital today. Um, I went up there to see her for the last two days or whatever, make sure she was straight and everything. But, um, yeah, y'all just continue to pray for my mom and, you know, um, pray that her health continues to, um, you know, improve or whatever. So, um, and I thank all my family and friends who have, you know, been there, you know, supporting me and my mom and everything. I really appreciate that. Um, but anyway, so let's get into the episode. So it starts off at 1 13th, like always, you know, Sky and C's, they come into the shop, you know, um, shit is telling, you know, the crew about how, you know, he got his baby mamas together with the, uh, with the exception of, um, Anya and, um, you know, he lets them know, like, hey, I want y'all to meet, you know, my new baby with Nikki and everything. Like, he wants to have a sip and see party. You know, not really a baby shower because the baby is already here. But, you know, um, a sip and see so y'all can um sip and see the baby and still, you know, bring us gifts or whatever. I'm like, you can still call it a baby shower even though the baby is already here. Oh, shit. But, okay. So, anyways, you know, Bay, she starts to kind of complain about, you know, being pregnant or whatever. Not really thinking about the fact that, you know, Donna just, you know, lost her baby and everything. And, you know, Kit is trying to tell her, Bay, shut up. You know Donna just lost her baby and everything. So, you know, Donna, um... She just tells her, I think you should just embrace it or whatever, you know. And she was like, you know, lately I've been um, researching, you know, um, about being pregnant or whatever. And she feels as though she could be Bae's, uh, you know, a uh, coach or whatever to coach her um, about her pregnancy. And then, you know, being a mom or whatever, whatever. Like all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> Google search, you know, she got all the answers, but you know, um, they also show a scene. They do show a scene later on with, you know, um, Donna trying to, you know, prep Bay for, you know, um, pregnancy and being the mom and everything. And she was kind of scaring Bay a little bit, but then, um, Bay did, um, ended up finding some comfort in, you know, Donna and being there and supporting her and everything. Um, Alex, he um pays uh sees back the money that he owes him for you know bailing him out um bailing him out of jail you know earlier on in the season and everything and you know sees is impressed he's like damn i didn't even think i was gonna get this money back or whatever so you know as sees is holding the money in his hand sky is like didn't your mom ever tell you not to be holding money like that in the hood and snatches it out of his hand and runs off and he's chasing after her so the next day ted he has this dog or whatever but finds out that he can't have a dog in his building, the building that he stays in. And they like, what the fuck? This is some shit you supposed to find out beforehand. Like, you know what I mean? So he wants Sky to have the dog and everything. And you know, um, Sky, she's cool, you know, with co parenting, you know, the dog with Ted and everything. And she's is like, uh, I don't really know if that's a good idea. You know, Sky's already obsessed over you. And then y'all talking about co-parenting this dog together. Yeah, I don't know about all that. So then Jada, she comes in and, you know, she's telling them how she's upset with Donna and how she's going to come up, you know, and she's trying to figure out how she's going to come up with, you know, the 1800 uh for her rent and everything and like it's been a week since she's seen donna and you know where's all the help that donna promised her or whatever and she don't want to seem like she's being insensitive but bills aren't paid on emotions and i understand what jada is saying you know it, it, it was kind of short notice and then you know donna's kind of you know donna's track history of you know being roommates with people don't seem that great so it seemed like oh damn you know is she being on some fuck shit again or whatever but at the same time it does come off like you're being insensitive to the fact that donna just you know lost this baby and everything and you know blase blase so sky in her confessional She's saying how she's annoyed because Donna just lost her baby and everything. And all you could think about is rent or whatever. And I, you know, I was kind of like, okay, you know, I kind of did feel 
where Sky was coming from on that. Because like I said, you know, I see both sides of it. But then when Sky was actually addressing Jada, she going to sit up here and talk about, so um, when are you going to take responsibility for the fact that maybe she don't want to live with someone who, you know, takes a sloppy seconds or whatever. And I'm just like, we really still on this? Like, do, do you keep on, like, forgetting that Donna went behind you and fucked Ted and fucked everybody else in the shop? And, like, y'all all sit up here and go behind each other. You know what I'm saying? So, I just, I didn't understand why. I, I mean, I thought when she would have addressed Jada, she would have addressed her, um on what she said in her confessional, not sitting up here bringing up the sloppy seconds and the shit with Ted and whatever, whatever. So, you know, Sky, she leaves and everything. And, you know, Jada, that's when she becomes pissed off at Ted. And she's like, you never stand up the sky, whatever. And I'm like, who really does stand up the sky? None of these motherfuckers really stand up the sky the way that they should. You feel me? So, you know, um... Ted is like, I mean, because she don't bother me. And Jada is like, you know, um, you don't say nothing if it's not targeted towards you, yada, yada, yada. And Ted is like, uh, bingo, <laughs> that's the whole point, you know. Jada's calling him pussy or whatever that knocks his hat off and she leaves and everything. And, you know, sees is like, it's about time somebody check, check your ass and da, da, da. So then the next day, um, sees, he pulls Alex to the back, and they're thinking, like, ooh, Alex, you in trouble or whatever, but actually, sees pulls him to the back to let him know that he's proud of him. He wasn't sure if he was going to make it, you know, on the Black Ink, um, team at first, but he's really proud of him, especially him paying him back for bailing him out. So, you know, um, Alex, he's like, you know, I, you know, I consider you to be like a big brother to me at this point, and, you know, he talks about his dad and how him and his dad are not on good terms, you know, and how his dad, we already know his dad was always locked up and everything, um, and then his dad was like a drinker, you know, and when he drank, that's when he really became kind of violent towards him growing up, and Alex was like, he finally had to cut him off like a year ago or whatever, and we find out a little later on what was the situation that kind of led him to, you know, cut his dad off, so, um, Seize is like, you know, listen, you only get one dad. I understand how you feel or whatever. You know, my dad died a few years ago, and I lost that opportunity to kind of really talk to him and tell him how I feel. And he's like, listen, even if y'all don't agree or whatever, and you feel like at that point you done with him, at least have a conversation with him to let him know how you feel or whatever, you know, and say what you got to say so at least it'll be off your chest so you know what to do with this chapter of your life. So, um, then we have Ted, uh, meeting up with Sky at dinner or whatever, and he realizes after Jada kind of flipped out on him the other day that he does kind of need to stand up to Sky and let her know, like, listen, like, you gotta chill out, you know what I'm saying? So Sky, she comes and she's thinking it's a date or whatever, and she's like, oh my god, this is such a nice place, and, you know, um how she just loves him so much and all this other stuff. And she's, you know, she starts thinking that, you know, I'm sitting up here trying to find a random person to impregnate me. And maybe um, the person that should is standing right in front of me, that person being Ted. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> like, y'all already supposed to be co-parenting with this dog and everything. Imagine if they had a kid together. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, ma'am. Okay, so Ted, you know, um, he's trying to figure out where they stand or whatever. And, you know, he says that, you know, you know, I love you and everything, but you got to chill out on being so being like possessive over me or whatever, you know, like why you try to run every female, run every female that I deal with out of my life, but you could do what you want to and... <laughs> You know, I'm just supposed to be like, oh, okay, you know, like, no, nah, this is not how this works. You got the game totally fucked up here, you know? And he's like, listen, I just need you to stay out my love life, okay? And so, as he's talking, she tells him to shut the fuck up or whatever. And in the process of telling him to shut the fuck up, she hits him. And I'm just like, see, you won't get enough of hitting these men, Sky. I'm, 
You won't get enough of that shit, okay? So she hits him, and it's just so awkward. He just kind of, you know, looks at his phone and everything, and it's just awkward for like a few minutes or whatever, and I'm just sitting here like, Okay, so what is we doing here? You know, like, you know, come on with shit, you know. So then she finally gets up to leave and everything. And she's, you know, she's like, but I love you, though, or whatever. Like, just nonsense, okay. <laughs> so Alex, he he decides to take Caesar's advice. He meets up with his dad or whatever. And, you know, He's, you know, there to tell his dad why he distanced, his, distanced himself from him. You know, he felt like that, um, he tells his dad that he feels like he didn't have the relationship that he wanted to have with him growing up. Because, you know, um, he felt like, you know, his dad kept on getting locked up. And then when he did come home, you know, your way of parenting was if I didn't do what you say or did things the way you wanted me to do it, you would punch me in my chest and shit like that. And it made me, you know, scared of you. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially when you was drunk or whatever. And then that's when his dad starts to tell him about, you know, prison life. And, you know, um, in there, you know, um, if you show emotions, they'll, you know, use it against you. And I just wanted you to, you know, be tough or whatever. And parents do have to realize sometimes that, you know, doing certain things, especially when his dad would be drunk and would hit him and stuff like that, like... That's not really always the way to, you know, go about things or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, I understand, you know, you want him to be, especially when it comes to, you know, um, men. You know, um, a lot of times we show, uh, we always tell them, oh, you got to be tough. You got to be tough. You got to be tough. And as they get older to become you know, men or whatever, they don't really know how to show emotions properly or they think, you know, to, the way to handle things is to always hit somebody or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Alex, he's getting kind of frustrated a little bit because he feels as though his dad is not really grasping what he's saying to him. So Alex is like, you know, I already had that level of respect for you. I wish you would have just spoken to me sometimes versus just you know putting your hands on me and hitting me in my chest and everything you know and um he was like you know you put your hands on me one time when I had my son in my hands and that made me feel like you ain't give a fuck about neither one of us so I'm assuming this is the event that kind of led Alex to be like you know fuck it I'm cutting him off and everything and he was like, you know, honestly, I think I disowned you that day, you know, and his dad kind of gets quiet a little bit, kind of puts his head down a little bit. And he's like, you know, I hate that day, you know, because I shouldn't have did that. And I don't want you to feel like I don't care about you or my grandson and everything. And, you know, um, it was no excuse for me to do that or whatever. So Alex, he kind of gets emotional and he's like... That's all I really wanted was an apology. You know what I'm saying? And he just really kind of starts to break down. And, you know, um, we got to definitely see a different side of Alex, a.k.a. the vagina slayer, you know. Um, and his dad, he grabs him and, you know, holds him and, you know, apologizes to him again. And, um, yeah, I just hope that their relationship, you know, that that definitely was a step. But I just hope that their relationship continues to progress and, you know, flourish into something that Alex always wanted from his dad. So, yeah, that definitely was um, a touching scene. Um, so then we have, oh, shit's uh, Sip and See. <laughs> so, you know, um, everybody is at the place, at the venue that they um, rented out or whatever. Um, shit and Nikki, they arrive. And, you know... Um, the crew, they're like, you know, some of the people in the crew, they're in the, they're in their confessional saying like, saying how much, you know, the baby doesn't look like shit and this, that, and the third. And then Sky, she comes and she brings her potential uh, baby daddy, you know, the guy that, the gay guy that she met at, you know, the gay club or whatever um, last week. She brings him and she needs Bae to like fill him out to see if like he's a good candidate or whatever. So... 
Donna and Jada, they're good again. She actually came through and found Jada a roommate or whatever. Um, sees, he's asking, Ted, yo, what's up with you and Sky? Like, she ain't say hi to you or nothing. He like, she can keep it that way too. So, you know, Ted is telling, um, sees about what happened at dinner and how she, you know, hit him or whatever. So, he ain't really got nothing for her right now. So as he's talking to C, Sky is right behind him looking all crazy and shit like that. And he's like, she's right behind me, isn't she? And, you know, C's is like, you know, Ted, don't move. Maybe she really don't see you and everything. And so um, she tells him that she wants to talk to him. So, you know... Um, Pretty much she apologizes for what she did and everything, you know, and um, it was no excuse for her putting, you know, hands on him and this, that, and the third. And, you know, he forgives her, yada, yada, yada. So Kev, he brought a DNA test. And, um, you know, because Donna was saying, Donna, she was saying how she kind of does feel bad that they're obsessing over the paternity of the baby and this, that, and the third, but they feel like shit should know, especially because, you know, Sky, you know, it was her idea and everything, and they played back. You guys remember when Sky did say that they should do a DNA test or whatever. So, you know, um, like I said, Kev, he brought, you know, he brought a DNA test, and he takes the crew to the back or whatever. And um, minus, you know, C's and Ted, I think. Um, but the rest of them were back there. And Sky is like, um, what y'all about to do or whatever? And she and she sees what's going on. And they like, yeah, we're going to have you, you know, um, get some um, DNA from the baby or whatever. And she like, oh, no, the fuck I ain't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, Donna is like... But this was your idea, though. And now you sitting up here reneging and everything. And Sky's like, listen, I'm not going to be a part of this. And she leaves. And she's like, you know, she knows that they talked about it or whatever, joked around. But after meeting the baby, she feels kind of fucked up. And if, you know, he's happy, then, I mean, and he feel, you know, he feels like it's his baby or whatever, whatever, then, you know, fuck it. Who am I to sit up here and get in the way of that? So, excuse me, they go to plan B. They see Tati is, you know, fucked up or whatever. And um, they figured, oh, yeah, we should get her to do it and everything because she's so wasted. So they tell her what to do, you know, go up to the baby and be like, oh, my God, Nikki, you know, um, she's, you know, um, the baby got so much milk on her mouth or something like that they was telling her to say. So Tati, she goes up to um, actually, oh, shit, was holding the baby. And, you know, she's just wiping the She's wiping the bag. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hey. Yeah. Hold hey. on. Donna's home. Auntie's here. Hey, okay. Hold on, y'all. I'm doing a video. I'm Hold sorry, on. baby. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, you guys. Um, <laughs> My mom is home, so I got to wrap this up. Um, So, yeah. Let me get back to where I was saying. Um, So... Um, okay, yeah, so Tati, she's casually wiping the baby and everything, and she's like, you know, the drunken tongue comes out, and she's like, you know, um, you know, um, I don't know why they're saying that the baby doesn't look like you or whatever, this, that, and the third, and shit is like, say what now? They talking about uh, who? So he comes down to address everybody. He's pissed off and everything. And he's like, so everybody has something to say about my baby or whatever. And everybody looking around like, mm, you know, scratching their head, scratching their armpits and stuff like that. You know, and he's going off on them, which is understandable. And like I told you guys before, um, you guys know I've had my feelings about Nikki and everything. But for them to like just try to do that, like really overstepping their boundaries, trying to get the paternity of this baby and everything, I did feel like that was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Even if they weren't having, um, I mean, for one, to do it at this party was fucked up. But to even try to do this period is, you know, fucked up or whatever. Because, yeah, I mean, if he feel like the kid is his, then that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, like I said, we all kind of side-eyed Nikki a little bit. But it was just fucked up for them to even, you know, do something like that. But then Sky, she gets up and tells who all was a part of it as if she wasn't the one who, you know, had originally said 
said it out her mouth or whatever, this, that, and third. So, you know, Donna, that's when she raises up and like, hold on, bitch, you ain't about to sit up here and put this shit on us like you were a part of it too or whatever. So, you know, um... Sky, she's like, you know, y'all ain't got nothing better to do but to sit up here and be in everybody's business or whatever, this, that, and the third and everything, as if Sky don't be in everybody's business, her own self, but okay, you know, and so then... Sky and Donna, they walking towards each other like, yo, don't get up in my face. Don't get up in my face. Sky misses Donna. And that's when Donna starts hitting on Sky. But they kind of cut it off or whatever. So um, I guess we're going to have to kind of see the rest of the fight next week and everything. But yeah, um, you guys, um, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys come back. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, y'all. Bye.